let's going to talk now about earthquakes and seismic waves. The internal energy of the Earth can also be felt when an earthquake happens, you know, when everything shakes. But now you may be wondering, what is an earthquake really? Well, an earthquake is a vibration produced by a sudden fracture or movement of the crust. The vibration releases energy that has slowly accumulated in the rock and can be transmitted through thousands of kilometers. Thousands of smaller earthquakes take place every day. Some go unnoticed, I mean, you don't know them. Others, very little in comparison, are very dangerous and are felt by everybody in hundreds of kilometers around. Rock fractures occur underground associated to plate boundaries and sometimes also to, due to human activity when they do mining, fracking techniques, for example when we extract gas, or when they do, I mean when we do, the humans, atomic bomb trials. If they occur close to the surface, the vibrations are greater and the earthquake is more destructive. The underground point where the rock breaks is named the hypocenter or focus. As I told you before, rock usually breaks along a fault and the stored energy um, uh, which is built up over the years is suddenly released producing vibrations. Vibrations are transmitted in all directions from the hypocenter as seismic waves. The epicenter is here over the surface just above the hypocenter and it is where the greatest damages are going to happen, so it is the dangerous place. The formation occurs very slowly at plate boundaries, and great amounts of elastic energy builds up and is stored inside underground. When the rock finally breaks, the plates may suddenly move swiftly several meters causing a large earthquake. If this happens on the ocean floor, making a sudden upward movement, the water above shakes and generates destructive waves. Yes, I know, you, you already know, a tsunami, that's the name they receive. That was what happened in 2014, an earthquake caused the big tsunami in Indonesia. Thousands of lives and belongings were destroyed. In order to register earthquakes, Geologists use a seismograph that can detect seismic waves. The intensity or magnitude can be measured with the MMS scale, Moment Magnitude Scale, very similar to Richard, which is old-fashioned today. It provides an estimate of the total amount of energy released at the hypocenter. Each level of the scale indicates approximately 30 times more energy than the previous level, which means that it's a lot. Other kind of scale is Mercalli that indicates the level of destruction on human buildings and belongings. The largest earthquake 
recorded happened in Valdivia, in Chile country in 1960. It had a magnitude of 9.5 degrees. Seismic waves are P and S. P waves or primary waves are longitudinal and are fast. They are called primary waves because seismic stations detect them first. S waves or secondary waves are transverse waves that travel more slowly and arrive after P waves to the seismographs. For this reason, they are called secondary waves. The surface waves can travel from the epicenter over the surface of the Earth. They are responsible for most damage and they travel through different kinds of material at different speeds. They travel fast through compact rock like granite because dense rocks absorb practically no energy, but if they travel through loose or less dense rocks like sand and clay, the speed is going to be slow. This is because less dense rocks absorb much of the energy. Less dense rock deforms easily when surface waves pass through, causing buildings to collapse.